Some women have penises, right? Some men have vaginas. A woman is not anything in particular. There is not one particular thing. It could be many things to many people. A woman is an adult human female. You're welcome. Matt Walsh is a conservative commentator on YouTube, and he became well known for asking woke activists on the Dr. Phil show, what is a woman? Womanhood is something that is an umbrella term. It includes people that who- That describes what? People who identify as a woman. I identify as what? As a woman. What is that? Recently, he made a movie about this controversial question. But why is it controversial? I'm a transsexual man, and here are my thoughts after watching What is a Woman by Matt Walsh. I'm not a woman, so I, <laughs> I can't really answer that. Women only know what women are. Are you a uh, cat? No. Can you tell me what a cat is? Do you want to tell us what a woman is? In the movie, we are introduced to a gender-affirming pediatrician, Michelle Forcier. I'm sorry if I don't pronounce that right. Matt asks, Michelle, when does a medical transition begin? She replies, when the patient says that they're ready for it. And then she talks about how a medical affirmation could start even before puberty with puberty blockers. Puberty blockers, which are completely reversible. One of the drugs used is Lupron, right? Which mm -hmm. has actually been used to chemically castrate sex offenders. You know what? I'm not sure that we should continue with this interview. You don't want to talk about the drugs that you give to kids or... Listen, a child cannot consent to puberty blockers. A child cannot consent to cross-sex hormones or even surgeries. A child can't wrap their head around the fact that this medical transition isn't as reversible as these professionals make it out to be. They don't understand how puberty blockers or cross-sex hormones could possibly make them sterile. They could possibly experience bad bone density, messed up genitalia, and lack of orgasms when they're older. Later on, Matt has a conversation with a college professor who teaches women's studies, gender studies, and their conversation was very fascinating. You have to watch it yourself to figure out why. One thing I noticed in particular was how the professor kept asking Matt, why are you asking this question, what is a woman? Implying, why do you care so much? And the irony is outstanding in this one. You sit there as a college professor in gender studies, rambling on and on about gender ideology, and you wonder why Matt cares? Moving on, a very interesting person appears in this movie, Dr. Marcy Bowers. She's a surgeon and very well known in the trans community, and she's a trans woman herself. Her specialty is performing vaginal plasties, which is the bottom surgery that trans women get. And in the movie, she states that the youngest she has ever done a vaginal plasty on was 16 years old. I don't know what you all think, but constructing a penis into a vagina on a 16-year-old is so unethical to me. I can't even. Matt also covers the issue with trans women in women's sports. He gets in touch with a woman who was on the same team as Leah Thomas, the famous trans swimmer, and she chooses to keep her identity hidden. The woman says that if anyone on the team had a concern about Leah competing, the coach would send people from the LGBTQ center or the psychological services to have a meeting talking to these girls how to deal with the concern better. Don't get me wrong, I understand how she doesn't want her face out there, but the fact that you have to cover your face and voice just in order to say, it's unfair that a biological man is competing against biological women. Or, I as a woman am uncomfortable being in the same locker room as a biological man. Just shows how fucked we are as a society. Yes! 
Going back to the topic of bottom surgery, Scott Nugent appears in this movie. He's a transsexual man in his late 40s, and he had horrible complications due to his bottom surgery. His medical complications included seven surgeries, a pulmonary embolism, an included stress heart attack, sepsis, a 17-month reoccurring infection, 16 rounds of antibiotics, three weeks of daily IV antibiotics, arm reconstructive surgery, lung, heart, and bladder damage, insomnia, hallucinations, PTSD, and $1 million in medical expenses. Nobody would help me, including the doctor that did this to me because I lost my insurance. I have no words. I really loved his interview with Matt. I'm a biological woman that medically transitioned to appear like a male. I will never be a man. Scott did amazing and he did an amazing job explaining the danger of puberty bloggers that we should all know. And I'm definitely gonna make a video about Lupron, so stay tuned. One thing he said really stood out. It got me at 42. Your child doesn't have a chance. If trans adults don't receive all the information about the medical transition, which they're entitled to get, how little are kids told? For obvious reasons, he regrets his surgery, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he's detransitioning. I wonder why the Daily Wire chooses Scott and not some transsexual who who's happy with their transition. We only see trans people who either justify kids medically transitioning or trans people who regret their surgeries. They could have used transsexuals like Blair White or myself who are healthy, stable, based people who believe in biology, believe in science and common sense, but who are also happy with our transition. The balance is important. Importante. Why didn't they include me? Lash Habibi. Matt was repeatedly saying in the movie that he's seeking the truth. But you're not seeking the truth if you're not showing all sides. So my conclusion is, this is kind of a biased movie, which I think you all know. But no matter what, I think it's a great movie and I highly recommend you watching it. Actually, you have to watch it. And what you also have to do is subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you want to see more and I'll see you in my next video. Peace out.